I, I think I explained this, you know, we're going to talk for about 10, 15 minutes and I'll try to keep it to that. Uh, sure. And these are, you know, just truly introductory uh, interviews. You know, sometimes forums don't really kind of give candidates enough time to talk about their background and their motivation for running. And so I just thought that it would be helpful. Okay, so let's just start with uh, your your background and where you come from and how you pronounce sure. your name. And <laughs> well, it, um, thank you, David, for this opportunity to talk to your viewers. Uh, my name is David Wojciechowski. Uh, it's pronounced Wojciechowski. If it was in Polish, it'd be Wojciechowski. Um, but uh, Wojciechowski is great. And um, so, yeah, um, I'm a, a business, business executive uh, entrepreneur um, with a concentration in financial financial structuring over the past 30 years. I have brought people together with really strong opinions um, and uh, negotiated uh, successful outcomes. Uh, as well as with uh, municipalities and towns. And uh, through this experience, talking to my friends here in St. Michael's and business leaders, uh, someone tugged on my shoulder and said, would you ever consider running for commissioner? And I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a, a, I'm humbled by that, uh, by that thought. Um, but, uh, you know, that's a big job interview. <laughs> it's 900, 900 bosses and uh or so give or take and um but you know thinking that it was going to be a job interview i thought i better do my homework do my due diligence um Where did you know, you so i reached out and i uh i scheduled a lot of meetings with residents um some some people viewing this might uh, recognize me um with business leaders and with nonprofits. and uh, my goal was to listen 100 percent listen yeah, and uh, understand what their views were, what uh, concerns they have for the town, where they see for the future. And uh, during that process, uh, someone asked me a direct question. They said, "Are you going to be a business commissioner, or are you going to be a resident commissioner?" And I was, David, quite frankly, I was shocked by that. I said, "You know, it, I'm a town commissioner. We sh we should do what's right for this town." No. because um, this town's been here long before us and it's going to be here long after us. And so we need to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so what I learned from all this caffeine basically is that um, he here was the focus that, uh, that, I, that I wanted to bring to the table as a commissioner. And that is um, quality of life and uh, safety because uh, safety is a proactive move. It's, it's not a reactive plan, mm -hmm. right? And uh, fiscal responsibility and ethical leadership. You know, don't spend more than you have, uh, put away for the future for capital expenditures. And fiscal le uh, and ethical leadership um, basically have accountability. Yeah. And, and third focus is uh, stewardship of our history uh, solving for the needs uh, of today and building for the future. And so how would I, how would I approach that? Um, I would approach that with an absolute balance, um, clear, uh, clear balance of all views, all voices are important, uh, full communication and transparency. And, uh, and, and again, accountability, do what you say you're going to do. So uh, before we get into some of the, the context on this, uh, give me a little bit more about your background. Where were you raised? Where, did you have a town, a small town exposure growing up? Is that... Well, yeah, uh, Yardley Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, small town, uh, Yardley Bucks County, beautiful, uh, a waterfront town. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, that's, uh, basically, uh, been raised in Pennsylvania until, uh, decided to bought our house, our forever home in 2002, uh, here on Chestnut Street in St. Michael's. And why St. Michael's? You know, we, David, we, uh, when I was dating my wife, we sailed into St. Michael's and the church bells were ringing and, uh, we, you know, I I tried for the third time to set the anchor, and <laughs> and finally we uh, we settled in, and um, and we watched a couple of uh, uh, birds nesting on on a on a channel marker channel marker, and uh, Susan turned to me and she said, "This would be a great place to to have a home," and 
And with a lot of luck and a lot of hard work, um, years later, we uh, we found our home here on, Ch on Chestnut Street. It's um, It's been 22 years, believe it or not. Amazing. Well, okay, let's get started with some of this. And, you know, uh, the spy is a foreign correspondent. Uh, we are uh, not uh, on a day-to-day -day watching St. Michael's, but uh, here are some of my thoughts. And there is this... Um, difference, I think, of where St. Michael's future lies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I don't want to simplify it too much, but basically there are some in the community that feel like we've lost our identity as a town and we need to kind of reevaluate how we position tourism. Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, for lack of a better word, a pro-business uh, future where uh, the town goes out of its way to provide even more incentives for for growth and stability. Which side are you on? Well, um, a balanced side, David. Um, you know, there there needs to be a balanced approach to. You know, small towns have always been you know the butcher baker candlestick maker, and uh, I would like to see the St. Michael's continue to be the the town of choice. And what I mean by that is a place to a uh, place to live to raise a family uh, to find community and uh, to to have business friendly environment and also to to embrace our visitor our visitors um, we we definitely um, there, there's a there's a delicate balance between um, tourism where it's con convention convention based tourism where there's thousands and thousands of people coming and then there is uh, tourism that's basically right-sized for the town that come here for the purpose of sharing our town uh, for our, our, our 200, 300-year-old homes, for our, our waterfront, for the unique shops that we have walking up and down the street. We're, we're um, you know, we used to manufacture and build ships way back when. Today, we build memories. We build memories and we build an experience. And... Um, so that's what I'd like to see, that balance in our town where our community is working together. Uh, accommod accommodations tax is a big part of our revenue, but we need to, you know, the commissioners of St. Michael's need to understand what's behind that accommodation tax. It's, a, it's an eco-economic kind of circle where we have the atmosphere, we have the businesses to work together with the community, and we, we create a sense of place for our residents and for our businesses, but we don't want to penalize anyone for being here. We want to be fair across the board. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the other, speaking of revenue, there, there has been some discussion and different points of view about what uh, the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum should be uh, contributing. Uh, as you know, many of those involved with the museum say that they're already contributing a significant amount to St. Michael's. Do you have any strong opinions about that? Yeah, well, um, I do uh, on the um, on the topic of contribution. Uh, contribution is not just financial. Con contribution is uh, what you do for the community, uh, the programs that you have. Um, you know, the the um, people point the finger, and they and I've actually heard groups say that they've calculated the event land value. And what they should pay as a pilot program should be, you know, take a number. The number I heard was $150,000 a year. Okay, that is, what does what does that do? What is the answer to to that problem? Is you just throw money at the problem? It's that's not the problem. The problem is our our tourism for the quality tourism. You know, there are certain events during the year that put more pressure on the town than other events. So we want we want quality tourism that people come here to enjoy our town, walk our streets, and we don't want to um, to to require that the residents can't find parking and that you know there's this unfair pointing of contribution. Um, we have a working, living, 24-hour town, and so I think that balance is that we can reach out to the Maritime Museum. And I've already had conversations and I and I've walked away with they want the same thing that other people want in this town. They want to do right by the town. They want to be a good neighbor. And I, I thought it was very, very positive. 
You know, the other thing that I'm, I'm seeing is a trend um, throughout the midshore are issues related to transparency. Um, mm -hmm. Had instances in Oxford and, and now Cambridge where that issue is central to some really tough um, points of view in both communities. And I, I wanted to get your take on uh, whether St. Michael's should be doing more. Are they doing uh, reasonably well on that front? What's your, what's your, well, I, I think David, we could always do better. Right. Um, so, uh, the, the way that I'd like to approach, if I do get the opportunity to sit in one of the chairs is I would like to embrace, uh, my other four commissioners, my other four partners, the other four leaders that are going to be working with me. And I would, I would encourage to adopt, uh, points of ownership of different issues. So if they're, in, instead of uh, things happening and people don't understand how the sausage is made, basically, to open up that process, have more open forum uh, meetings uh, that might um, involve the public um, and some, uh, you know, personnel meetings, of course, cannot involve the public. But I want to open that opportunity to have more of the working session meetings be open to the public so that uh, people can understand the conversations that are going on between each one of the leaders that they've elected, the thought process behind the decisions that they're coming up with. And I think that it, that would be very, very helpful in the education to understand and alleviate some fear. You know, I always save some time in the end for, for things that you, you feel that we have missed in talking about the candidate, your candidacy and... Mm -hmm. The things you want to do. What are what are those goals, and how do you see that future? Yeah, on the short term, David, um, I'm I'm very concerned that we um, that we support our chief of police. Um, I want to make sure that we have the uh, our chief has the resources, both personnel and other resources that he needs for our town. I think that's uh, uh, paramount. Um, also, you know, the town recently did a, did a very large acquisition, a $3 million acquisition. And uh, part of that acquisition was counting on a $1.7, $1.6 million grant. I want to make sure we have the resources to have that, the right to win that, that grant, because if we don't, that's going to be very, that's going to be critical to our capital reserves. And, um, you know, in the short time, I'd like to you know, bring together this, um, this community, bring our community back together, businesses, residents, nonprofits. Uh, we have a big decision to make uh, reference to the fall if we're going to, what we're going to do with the accommodations tax. There's been discussions of bringing that up to uh, the level set to what it is for the rest of Talbot County. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of considerations in, in that decision. And so we want to, that's one of the first big decisions that the community should get together with in reference to that. Mm -hmm. So that's part of that transparency and, um, and the, the, the safety area is, is clearly one of my focus. I want to make sure chief has the right resources he needs. Thank you. And, and thank you for throwing your hat in the, the ring, so to speak. <laughs> it gives me faith in democracy that your people who are as busy as you are, are willing to, um, set aside some time for civic activity. So thank you. Well, thank you, David. And thank you to all your viewers. And uh, I hope to see everyone out on voting day. Thank you very much.